breaking news this Friday night, another earthquake. This one even bigger, the second one in 24 hours. Authorities say this time many buried alive. The dramatic pictures coming in now, fire in the sky, the landslide, and the urgent hunt for the missing and the trapped. Also breaking tonight, the tornado touching down back here at home, and now the tornado watch in effect this Friday evening for millions. The controversial video tonight, the paddle used in school. A kindergartner punished the video seen by more than a million now, and we want your opinion tonight. The Manson murders and the stunning development tonight. All these years later, the fate of the homecoming princess turned killer. And what she told Diane Sawyer all those years ago. And the schools on lockdown, this mountain lion on the loose. The aerial images as it all plays out. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with the terrible scene playing out in Japan at this hour. The second earthquake, and tonight many there have been buried alive. You can see the lights on this bridge there shaking as the quake measuring 7.0 hits. And the stunning images coming in right now, the fires erupting, power and gas lines ripped apart. Hundreds of thousands without power. Many were killed during the first earthquake last night. And tonight, after so many tremors, this major quake, the biggest yet. At this hour, the urgent hunt for survivors trapped under their collapsed homes. ABC's Matt Gutman on the crisis unfolding right now. That powerful new jolt heaving this massive landslide, pulverizing concrete as if it were paper mache. These shaky images capture the moment the 7.0 quake hits in the dead of night, 1.25 a.m., violently striking the rattled southern city of Kumamoto again. Even stronger than yesterday's deadly quake with multiple epicenters. Tonight, Japanese officials reporting dozens buried alive. Urgent calls flooding in of people trapped inside buildings. Rescuers desperately going door to collapsed door, struggling to get through streets clogged with rubble and broken glass. Multiple structure fires shooting flames and smoke into the night sky. The quake pancaking buildings, slamming tons of concrete on these cars, other apartment blocks seemingly buckled inward. Stores gutted, windows blown out as if detonated by explosion. Yesterday, we spoke with survivor Noel Vincent. We found him again tonight. Wow, there is lots of shaking. Capturing the terrifying screams during an aftershock. Shoeless and too afraid to go back into his apartment. You know, I think yesterday uh, people were shocked, but I think today people are kind of terrified. All this in an urban area still staggering from yesterday's quake, 44,000 people already staying in shelters. Nine died in Thursday's quake, but many rescued, including this eight-month-old baby girl, plucked from the rubble, carefully handed from rescuer to rescuer toward an ambulance. David, we're getting reports that over 1,000 people have been injured in that hard-hit city. That, as we're learning at this hour, that a hospital is evacuating its patients amid fears it could collapse. David. All right, Matt Gutman, thanks to you leading us off. We'll continue to monitor this as we're on the air. Also, in the meantime, back here at home tonight, and to the dangerous tornadoes touching down late today, now millions put on high alert as we head into this evening. This image coming in a short time ago near Pueblo, Colorado, a tornado blowing across the horizon there. And we're watching a system in the west on the move, fueling this wildfire in the hills north of Los Angeles. Meantime, powerful winds in L.A. knocking over trees, destroying cars, thousands losing power. And on top of the tornado concerns, a snowstorm for parts of the country this weekend. Meteorologist Rob Marciano live in D.C. tonight tracking it all. Rob? David, let's get right to the area that we're, we're most concerned tonight. Severe weather is going to continue across the high plains. Uh, tornado watch out now for parts of the Texas panhandle. A sprawling system, slow moving, and we're going to see a number of advisories. High winds to the west and big time snows for the entire state of Colorado. Winter storm warnings for Denver could see a foot of snow there, two feet plus in the mountains. It's a slow mover, heavy rains east of the front and severe weather as well. Pretty much the entire state of Texas will be under a severe weather threat both Saturday and Sunday. Meanwhile, it's moving slowly because there's a huge ridge of high pressure that's jamming everything up. It's what's giving the east nice weather this weekend and beyond, David. All right, Rob Marciano with us live from Washington. Rob, thank you. Meantime, to the race for the White House tonight and the all-out brawl in Brooklyn. A short time after, Bernie Sanders headed to the Vatican, trading the battleground there for holy ground. While Hillary Clinton today headed someplace else and landed a victory it appeared she wasn't expecting. Here's ABC's Jonathan Carl tonight.
Hillary Clinton has already won New York. It was just a game of dominoes at a senior center in Harlem. She's hoping for a much bigger win in the primary next week. So help me win next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, okay? As for Bernie Sanders, he made a detour all the way to Vatican City today. No meeting with the Pope, but a chance to road test his message on holy ground. After the brawl in Brooklyn. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Can I? Loud, nasty, and personal. But I do question her judgment. I question a judgment which voted for the war in Iraq. The worst foreign policy blunder in the history of this country. Well, the people of New York voted for me twice to be their senator from New York. And, and President Obama trusted my judgment enough to ask me to be Secretary of State for the United States. Sanders repeatedly hammered Clinton on her ties to Wall Street. I stood up against the behaviors of the banks when I was a senator. I called them out on their mortgage behavior. Secretary Clinton called them out. Oh, my goodness. They must have been really crushed by this. And was that before or after you received huge sums of money by giving speaking engagements behind them? And she hit him on gun control. This is a, this is a serious difference between us. And <laughs> what I want to start by saying, it's not a laughing matter. 90 people on average a day are killed or commit suicide or die in accidents from guns. 33,000 people a year. Both came ready to battle last night. John Carl with us live tonight. And John, both candidates claiming New York as their home turf on Tuesday. The stakes really sky high for both of them. It's really a must win for both of them, David. For Bernie Sanders to catch up in that delegate race, he not only needs to win New York, but he needs to win big. But for Hillary Clinton, who has been on a losing streak all month, a loss in her home state would be just symbolically devastating. All right, just days away. John Carl with us tonight. John, thanks as always. Next to the Republicans tonight, Donald Trump appearing overnight before his own party. Just as he takes them on over the process, having called it rigged, Ted Cruz was there too on his own charm offensive as he tries to challenge Trump on his own turf. And tonight, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton sounding very similar on at least one point. Here's ABC's Tom Yamas. Tonight, rare agreement between bitter rivals, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, both rallying around New York values. New York values represent great things. Our people are vibrant. Our people are loving people. We're builders. We make things. We have courage and we love our community. And that's what New York values is. Clinton echoing that. I'm asking for your support again in the primary on Tuesday to take those New York values to the White House. Both seeming to team up against Senator Ted Cruz, who attacked New York values when the campaign was thousands of miles away in Iowa. Now that it's here, a change of tune. God bless the great state of New York. Still, Cruz today tying Trump to New York's liberal mayor, Bill de Blasio, in a hard-hitting ad. He'll end up being a good mayor, maybe a very good mayor. I think he's going to want to make New York great. But Cruz on late night, jokingly taking advice from Trump. While you're here in New York, let me give you some advice. First, if you're on the street, walk fast. No one likes a slow walker. <laughs> Are you writing this down? Uh, hold on. L let me get my pen. Ted? Ted, did you get your pen yet? Did you get your pen? Ted? Ted, did you get your pen? Got it. Okay. <laughs> and David, tonight we finally know why it's so hard for Donald Trump to forgive and forget. He's finally answered that question. What's your favorite Bible verse? Well, it turns out it's from the Old Testament, Exodus, an eye for an eye. David? Tom Yamas, who will be anchoring this broadcast this weekend. Tom, thank you. We turn next to the battle over that controversial law in North Carolina, denying some rights to gay and transgender people, sparking boycotts. And this evening, despite pressure from Charles Barkley, the NBA saying no change, just as Bruce Springsteen offers a message for another state. Here's ABC's Eva Pilgrim. 
Tonight, the NBA is at the center of the so-called bathroom bill firestorm after being publicly put in the hot seat. As a black person, I'm against any form of discrimination. So I think the NBA uh, should move the All-Star Game from Charlotte. The location of next season's All-Star Game was a topic at today's NBA Board of Governors meeting. The law as it now stands in North Carolina is problematic for the league. Um, there was no discussion of moving the All-Star Game. The, what the view in the room was, we should be working towards change in North Carolina. Others are not showing as much patience. Bruce Springsteen canceled a concert in the Tar Heel State last week. Last night, performing in Michigan, where they are considering a similar law, the boss threatened more boycotts, saying, we hope the bill doesn't pass because we love playing in Michigan. Today, Circus Olay joined dozens of other companies boycotting North Carolina's law that forces people to use the bathroom of the gender listed on their birth certificate in public buildings. It has divided the state. David, state lawmakers are expected to return to Raleigh later this month and discuss this new law again. David? Eva Pilgrim with us again tonight. We turn now to the Manson murders all these years later and to a major decision California's governor will soon have to make after a parole recommendation after that notorious killing spree. The murders, of course, directed by Charles Manson in 1969. Leslie Van Houten, the youngest of his followers to take part of the killings. Behind bars for 46 years, the parole board now saying she could go free. ABC's Jim Avila reports it's now up to the governor and what Van Houten once told our Diane Sawyer. Leslie Van Houten, a homecoming queen, turned flower child killer member of the 1968 cult who carved X's into their foreheads, fueled by LSD and the helter-skelter philosophy of the mass-murdering monster Charles Manson. Now, 46 years later, the California Parole Board says her life sentence should be commuted and the now model prisoner freed. Diane Sawyer talked to her in 1994. How do you live with knowing that was inside of you? It's it's not easy. If anything, the, old, the older I get, the harder it is. At 66 years old, she does not deny a direct role in the murder of grocery store magnate Lino LaBianca and his wife, Rosemary. I stabbed Mrs. LaBianca in the lower back about 16 times. And there was no pity? No mercy, no. No. Van Houten's final fate now in the hands of Governor Jerry Brown. He routinely follows the parole board's guidance on these matters, but those parolees were not in the LaBianca house behind me, and they were not members of the Manson cult. David? ABC's Jim Avila tonight. Jim, thanks. Next to the growing outrage after a piece of video showing two adults at an elementary school in Georgia preparing to paddle a five-year-old child. It's perfectly legal in that state and in 18 other states, but parents across this country are divided. ABC's Steve Osinsami with the video and the debate tonight. Georgia police say what you're about to see in a public grade school is perfectly legal. The five-year-old's mother, who recorded the video, gave her consent to school officials to paddle her son after they say the boy fought with other children and then spat on a teacher. For many parents who've seen this tonight, it's deeply disturbing, and for many others, just fine. Thank you. But 22-year-old Shayna Perez now says she felt pressured to let them hit her child, worried she'd be sent to jail after more than three weeks of his unexcused absences. I wish that I could go back and stop all this. I'd have snatched him up and said, take me to jail. You know what? Suspend him. I don't care. Georgia is one of at least 19 states that still allows corporal punishment in schools. An estimated 167,000 public school children are physically disciplined every year. Authorities here in Jasper County say they never threaten Perez with jail. So you do spank him? Yeah, but I mean, they were shaking him around and holding him down. And I mean, you just, you don't do something like that to a five-year-old baby. The school says because of privacy issues, they can't discuss details of this case, but tell us they're re-examining discipline issues, underlining that corporal punishment is allowed here with parental consent. David. Steve Osinsami with us, ABC's uh, Steve uh, Osinsami, I should thank you. And we should also mention that this story is igniting a massive response on our Facebook page, more than 1,500 comments already. 
We hope you'll weigh in at Facebook again, Steve. Thanks. There's still much more ahead on World News tonight this Friday. The circus stunt gone wrong as so many families were watching, and we've seen terrifying.